So first of all, direction of percussion. If you look really, really closely, you'll see ripple marks in the flint. If you can see them this side as well. There are ripple marks in the pith flint. That's called a ripple of percussion. And that is the, for example, if you throw a pebble into water, the rings come out. That's percussion rings from the force of the pebble hitting the water. Exactly the same happens with flint. When you use a, I um, don't know if I have one here, but <laughs> if you use an antler pick or something like this, and you hit a piece of flint, there's a percussion mark that goes out and ripples through the flint. You can see it better on this one, like that. And that percussion is the force of the hit or the bashing going out through the flints. Okay, so this is what we're looking for and we're looking for that start point so for this one the start point of the percussion is here and it goes in that direction so I'll do the same and look at this one and look at my percussion points you have to move it around a bit to try and catch the light and I can see percussion points happening all over so I just want to mark approximately so I've got one coming in here I've got two Next, it's measuring and transferring the information. So put your, your stone, whichever way you need to, to make this work for me, it's gonna be on my left hand side. And measure, so either using something like this, your calipers, um, rulers, whatever, whatever works, whatever works for you, you can start measuring, transferring dots. So for this first one, Actually, I'll put this down here. Transferring dots. So, for example, I know from this corner, I want to draw from mark from here to here. So, first, we need to measure it. From there to there. There, so, there. so I know this ridge starts about here and this ridge will carry on until here and it goes up that width until there. So all the lines are drawn in, so all the ridges, all the peaks on our flint are all marked out and measured out here. That's good. So the next bit, what we need to do is look at the percussion marks. So again, try and wiggle your artifacts around as much as you can remember the light is always coming in from this direction and we've got to mark up these percussion marks so all these ripples that go through our flint like that so you've got to inspect your flint really closely if it helps you to torch or something like that just to get an idea of the direction once you see a direction then you've got to draw that direction now remember don't overshade. This is not an artistic interpretation. You are trying to communicate to whoever's going to look at it next exactly the direction of percussion, the direction of the ripples, how many they are. So this has to be factual rather than pretty. Okay, so to draw these percussion marks in, 
you identify one, you can find one. Let's have a look. I think, for example, there's one here. It comes all the way around and out. So the light's coming in from that direction. As well as um, indicating percussion marks through just using strike through kind of movements with your pencil, I also want to indicate natural. Now for natural stuff, for me, I find just a dotting technique. So just dotting all over the natural or the outside of the, the flint. Because we want to show it and I don't want somebody else to pick it up and think that this is actually part of something that needs to be analysed as much because it's, it's natural. Okay, so we have natural indicated by dots and then all the percussion marks and the fissures indicated by strike marks. The next bit what I want to do is indicate this direction. Now to indicate this direction, you've got to remember to orientate correctly. So this face is this face so this face has to point towards this face okay and then when i do this one this side points to that side Final little bit, what I want to do is just show the relationship between these pieces just to demonstrate that they are related, they are not uh, just individual flints. So what we do, just a little line between this one and this one to demonstrate that this side is related to this side of the flint and then this side of this flint is related to this side of the flint, like that, just two lines. For inking up, you put a piece of um, either permatrace or a piece of paper or something like that on your work. Good. Next bit is getting out pens. These fine liners I have with ink in, um, we have a, a 0.3, sorry, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.5. There's 0 0.5, there's 0 0.1, 0 0.3. For heavier bits and shading, use the thicker one. And for light bits and detail, use the thinnest. And then use the middle bit for everything in between. And you just trace over the top. This time we don't have to remember that top line and we also don't have to remember that the sun is coming in so we don't need that reminder either. But what we do need is those two marks to show the relationship between the flints sides and also we need that scale in as well. We've inked up, done everything. You've got to write any details you need to write for the site, for the archaeology, where it came from, the finds number, all those types of bits can go on. You can sign it, you can date it, you can frame it. Now all I've got to do is take off the masking tape and enjoy it. For this one, I'm just going to enjoy it as a bit of art, no other reason. A bit of art from the art I created years ago. Let's see it today. <sighs> Got this side. This side and this side.
MUDENG